Hello everyone, it's Sarah from Bright Stitcher. It is Wednesday, March 1st. Um, I know you guys have no clue, but this is the sixth time in the last hour that I'm starting this over. I am home alone with Elizabeth and every 10 minutes she's screaming at me wanting something and I have no patience for this child right now. So this at least may be a more condensed get this stuff down, right? Okay, so this is my January and February review video. I meant to do one a month ago, um, but then Elizabeth got sick with the flu that has lasted, it was a good two weeks. And what's funny is on day five, she hit a fever of 104, so we took her in, and they said, this flu is lasting two weeks. It's lasting everyone two weeks. You, she will have a fever for a good week, and then she'll start to feel better, but she's going to be congested and just gross for two full weeks. And it's true. Except in her case, the first four days, she was also getting sick. Like, you know, she was vomiting. Not all the time, but she'd go like 12 to 18 hours. You think you're in the clear, and she just randomly puked. So, well, it's fun. Anyway, she had it. Then I got it. Not as bad as her. Just the congestion. Abby got it, of course. <sighs> And, of course, she kept having the 101 fever in the morning, so she couldn't go to school. So that went on. Um, Girl Scout cookies came in early this month, February. I had to, I'm the troop leader, so I had to pick them up, had to sort them all out, had to deliver them all, had to get money, had to sell the rest of our cookies, which we have sold out. We are done. No more cookies for our troop. And there's a shortage from the bakers now because the Kansas City area has sold so many cookies this year. So that's great, um, but I also have moms calling me saying, I've got people wanting to place an order still, and not from us, they won't. I'm not ordering any more cookies. I'm done. So, so if you need Girl Scout cookies, go to your local grocery store this weekend. I'm sure the troops will be selling them outside. I'm done with cookies. Done. Now I just need people to turn into money, which is... Almost, nope, it's more fun getting parents to turn in the money and collect the money than it is to get them to actually pick up their cookies. Because we had a couple that took a week to pick up the cookies. Like, you have three weeks from the day the cookies came in until all the money is due. Meaning, not just to me, but I have to turn in deposit slips showing I deposited this money to the council cookie person. If you don't turn in the money to me, they're coming after you. That's one big thing they said. Do not chase moms down for money. If the parents don't get the money to you, we will take care of it. We will come after them. So I'm picturing Girl Scouts with bats chasing parents down the street wanting money. Just in my head. I hope that's what happens because that would be funny. <laughs> you know, they got secret agents for the Girl Scouts. So... <laughs> So if you want Girl Scout cookies next year, let me know. I'll order for you. Okay. So, um, okay, two things first. Um, I did random drawing earlier for um, the UFOs that I'm not going to finish. Little House Needleworks, um, the chart and fabric. Sorry brain. It's not working well. Um, okay, so this one is going to Margot Hay. I would have done this live in front of you, but I had the girls help me with it two weeks ago, and then I didn't do a video. And I don't want to do it again. And then um, the Dimensions Gold Collection English Valley Cottage is going to R&R Junkie 66. So, ladies, if you would um, or man, but I believe R&R &R Junkie 66 is a woman. If you would send me a message on here, put your email in the comments below, and then I could delete it if you'd like. Um, or send me a message on Facebook, and I'll get those shipped out to you. Um, Stitch from Stash. I signed up for it. I have failed. Not horribly bad like some. But well enough that I've decided I'm done. Um, I'm not buying a lot right now anyway because I'm looking at how much I have. And I sold a ton on Stitch from Stash. 
um, early January, I think, mid-January, and I realized, okay, I'm selling things that I bought six months ago, which means clearly I'm buying too much, losing interest, um, so in those particular projects, not cross-stitch, um, and I can't stitch fast enough to use all the fabrics and all the charts, and clearly none of us can, so anyway, um, I thought I did great last month. I ordered the Clouds Factory Fabulous Women in History chart. I waited until I saw it. I would have ordered it in November, but I was afraid, what if I don't like it? Like, I didn't like the ones they did last year, the travel. I loved the thought of a travel stitch along, but I didn't like how either one turned out. I just, it wasn't my taste. So I waited until I saw it. Well, I saw it. I loved it. Got to have it. Well, that was 20 bucks, and that's what I had limited myself to. So January's done. Um, I had a couple small finishes, but, and I finished winter in January. I'm pretty sure I showed that, though. It's done, done. I don't even know where it is now. It's upstairs in my box of finished. Um, so I think I had a small credit left over. But then, early February, Leslie sent me the chart and beads I ordered from her that I'd forgotten I ordered. And, oops, that killed that budget. So, let me show you that real quick. I had ordered Anemone and her bead pack from Leslie. I don't remember how much it was. It wasn't much. But it was enough to kill my budget. So I said, well, poo. How do I do that? Because I didn't report it. Because I forgot about it. Okay, well, we'll let that go. Well, then a couple weeks ago, I ordered some white and antique white Joblin from one, two, three stitch, just basic, because I just keep coming up with things and going, if I just had white, sometimes you just want white. And then I ordered um, the beads for Snapdragon, which I totally forgot that I already had, that I'd already ordered, because I just found them yesterday too. Somebody come, organize this room, please. Such a mess, between all my scrapbook and random crafts, and now I've got all the Girl Scout stuff in here, and then birthday stuff, like bags, and I still have Christmas things I need to go through. I'm just, I don't even want to come in here. It just, it feels so claustrophobic. Okay, so anyway, I spent like 33 with shipping at one, two, three stitch for the beads, two pieces of fabric, and a thing of needles. So, I have called it quits on Stitch My Stash. Um, I had signed up for the monthly magazine stitch chart thing. Um, I've quit that. I didn't even... It's almost like I was going through magazines just to find charts to stitch, but not necessarily ones I really wanted to stitch. Like, oh yeah, I can stitch that. Oh, I can stitch that. And well, I did that with January, and I got 10 stitches in and said, I don't really want to do this. So, I've stopped that. Um... Like I sign up for these stitch alongs thinking I'm going to do them or monthly things like that and then I just never get around to actually doing it. But one I'm going to do this month is um, the March History Month stitch along. Is that stitch mania? I think it is. Um, I'm going to work on Henry VIII most of the month and the Fabulous Women in History. And since I've been stitching on Henry VIII <clears throat> the last couple of days, that's easy. So, let me start going through. Oh! The Floss Tube Retreat. I have signed up to go. You should sign up to go. It's fabulous. Um, I believe on Facebook the group is just Floss Tube Retreat. It may even say North America in the title somewhere. Um, and if you request to join, Julie will do that. Add you in. Um, I think they're halfway. She's, there's either 23 sold or 23 left, but there, she's capping it at 50. Um, you pay the registration directly to Julie. Because she secured the hotel. Um, she's doing all of this. Um, it's awesome. She's doing putting this together for all of us. So um, I have got my hotel room booked. And paid my registration. And I will not book a flight <laughs> until the summer. So um, luckily Southwest as of this month now has a direct flight from Kansas City to Austin. For right now, I think it's like 89 each way if you were to book in the next month or so. 
for the next month. Um, so 200 bucks compared to I was playing around just looking like on Expedia and all the other airlines are saying four to six hundred dollars for you know a coach economy ticket seat for round trip and having to stop in Dallas and go then go down to Austin on a uh, Airbus um, and I hate layovers and some of those flights have a 10-hour layover in Dallas it's ridiculous especially since the Southwest is showing it's a two hour direct flight from here to Austin, two hours. So why is it taking an hour and 48 minutes to Dallas and then another hour over to Austin, which I'm sure they're, I mean, I don't have the state, the map of Texas memorized in my head. So I'm sure I'm going this way and then that way, or, you know, so it's not a straight line from here to Dallas to Austin, but they have these, I mean, I understand an hour or two or three hour layover, but 10 hours? No! I can drive there in 10 hours to Austin. I'm not, because I hate driving. I hate driving, but... Though I've told Ben if we rented an RV, I'd go up to Yellowstone and um, Mount Rushmore and all that. But he hates driving with me because I won't let him drive, so... That probably won't happen. So anyway... Okay, so what have I been stitching? I've been stitching a lot. I have done a lot of stitching. Except when I'm sick. And when I'm sick, I watch Netflix. And I've watched a lot of scandal lately. Like in the last month, I am up to towards the end of season four. And, it, and I'd never watched it before. Um, my parents have always watched it and they always go on and on about how, oh, it's so good, it's so good. I just never got around to it. It's good. I like it. Um, and I watched Chewing Gum on Netflix, which is funny. Don't watch it around kids. And what else was there? Victoria on PBS. It's amazing. Oh, so good. So good. I think that's it for the big ones I've been hooked on lately. I like it. Okay. So, all right. Let's get to stitchy stuff, right? Okay, so the other bit of stash I've received um, is just fabrics of the month. We have Stephanie's January Ice Crystals on Jobelin 232. 28. Oh, I think I Okay. 28 count Jobelin. Beautiful, beautiful blue. So pretty. Okay, love that. I love her Jobelin. It's so soft. I usually like Lugana, but hers are just, I don't know what you wash them, Stephanie, they're beautiful. And then her February, I just received a day or two ago, and this is a Jobelin, Gina. How pretty, oh, it's showing up gray. It's the prettiest greenish, bluish, tealy, I get some white. Oh, Dawn, you can't see. Well, imagine the most beautiful tealish, purplish, seafoam greenish fabric you've ever seen in your life. It's amazing. And it's soft. So pretty. I'm like, oh. oh. Love it. And I'm sad, actually, that I've never ordered a piece of this before. Usually, though, when I order directly, I have an idea what I want. You know, unless it's the big sale. But I have an idea what I'm going to use it. And then January's Under the Sea Fabrics Evergreen on 32 Jobelin. Oh, there's different companies, I think. This feels different. Or it's the 32. But it's a very pretty bluish evergreen green. It looks great. I wonder if it, is it this dark blue wall down here that makes the coloring all wonky? I wonder. I've been wanting to paint down here. I haven't painted this room since we moved in. It was a teenage boy's room. And it was our storage room until we had the girls. And then all my stuff got moved downstairs. So, But it would feel a lot brighter if I could paint it down here. Because, you know, my big window. Right? It's blinding how much sunlight. Do you hear the beeping? Let me 
tell you a little story that's been going on here for two weeks. The public pool built in 1964, which had that little pool building, you know, that little building that comes along with your public pools. It's like cement and it's a little concession stand in the back rooms. It's literally behind my house. If I had a neighbor behind me from our backyard, that would be their backyard. Okay. It's a small little park and this pool built in 64. Well, they decided two years ago to close it down. It was costing too much in maintenance and more people were going to, there more subdivisions have been popping up in our uh, town and area. So more subdivisions have their own pool. So people have been going there or going to the Y, which has an indoor pool, which is what we use. We barely use this one. It had a little kiddie pool for the girls. We use it maybe three times a year. So it's like, you know, it costs us like six, seven bucks just to go. So anyway, they weren't making any money on it. So they shut it down. And then last year it just sat empty. This was the first year they'd shut it down last year. Nobody knew what they were going to do with it. And they had bought a small elementary school that was the kindergarten a year ago. It had been just a kindergarten school for the last like 10 years. Um, it was the original tiny little elementary school in our town. The town is like maybe 6,000 people. It's not, we're not, we're a small town compared to Kansas City that we're next to. But it's growing and growing and growing. Um, and the kindergarten, that was the original elementary school from the 50s. It couldn't, you know, it was done. And my daughter was the last class to go through. So the town bought that. And the rumor has been they were going to turn it into a water park. Like, not a big water park, but the small ones, like with the sprinklers and the little, you know, things for little kids and maybe a small pool, you know, but more up to date and more fun. Um, they haven't done anything there. They said, oh, the voters haven't voted for it yet. But I recall voting on that two years ago saying, yes, I will pay extra taxes for a water park, for an up to date water park. Well, Starting two weeks ago, they have completely removed that pool from behind my house. That means jackhammers, big machines, big loud trucks, men yelling, big booms and bangs, and then they have the big dumpsters that they're dropping these chunks of concrete into. That's what Elizabeth and I have been listening to while she's been sick. We kept listening to that. They're still grading it now and just making it smooth. They've brought in a bunch of dirt slash mud. They had a big volleyball sand pit next to it that the girls played in all the time when it's nice out, um, and it's gone. They have just dozed that over and mixed it in with the dirt. Like, now the girls don't have a sand pit to play in. I mean, and it's still a park. There's still, you know, the tables and the patio, you know, that structure, the picnic structure. Um, and then there's a small play area for, little, for the kids. And now there's this big dirt block, but they're still grading it. And we usually ride their bikes in the parking lot there because it's right next door to us and our driveways on a incline. So we'll take their bikes over there and they can ride their bikes. And it's been so nice Monday and Tuesday this week. We haven't been able to do it because they are still going in and out with their big trucks until five o'clock. So I've been kind of upset, but I tried twice to take her to play with her, ride her bike and it's, you know, there's big trucks going in and out and then those little bobcats and I can't really have her riding her bike and all that and plus they're getting mud everywhere which is funny it hasn't even been raining but they've got mud everywhere so it's a mess and <sighs> but um, part of that property back there that they thought was pool that was city property is actually my property like we've got our backyard which is a normal size backyard we have a huge tree line and we're kind of on an incline or a little bit of a hill. So there's trees going down and then there's grassy land for like 40 feet. And then you have that pool building. Well, 30 of that 40 feet is our property. So they've always mowed it. I didn't know this until we had a survey um, a couple years ago. And my stepdad brought up the point of when they decide to do something because they haven't decided as far as we know, what they're going to do with that property yet. If they were just, maybe they're just preparing it now and they're going to make, maybe they're going to do a soccer field there. I don't have any idea. But if they decide to build something on there, it's like, you need to talk to them and sell them that part of the land from your tree line back, which I may do. If they start building something, I'll call up there. 
you know, I feel like I'm on a first name basis with the guy with the property line because we've had their trees and my trees and the tree line's weird and it's like a hill up to our house and half the trees are ours, half are theirs. So, and they're cottonwood. So they die, they fall over on our house and our yard. And so anyway, we've had issues over the years as far as we always have to find every, almost every year, you know, whose property is this? Whose property is yours? Who's it's mine? So is that your tree or my tree? Fortunately, they've always been my trees, but that's the beeping. It's like the most annoying sound in the world to me now. So we'll see. I mean, since they're making it so, so smooth, I'm thinking maybe they are going to do just a little soccer field there because soccer is really big around here a couple times a year. I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I'd like a water park thing. And if they could put it in my backyard, it'd be just awesome. Okay. Okay. Let's do this, people. My goodness. You're getting me all distracted and off track. I should really take a note from somebody's book and make a note of what I'm going to talk about. Okay. So, um, Stargazer. I have been working on her. Not enough. Because I just realized I here I thought her skirt was two thirds done and it might be halfway done. It's so big. I mean, I swear, it grows. The size of her skirt grows every time I look at the picture. I'm never gonna finish her. I wanna finish her. I've started beating um, cause I just got tired of stitching the same pale lilacs and white, like, well, something. So I did finish up her neckline, the little beads. You can't see there. Okay. So you can see she's got the little beads in her neckline and then down on her torso, her abdomen. So I have started the beads and this is 32 count. It's a Wexford linen from Silk Weavers. Um, I love Wexford linen. It is my favorite, favorite fabric. I mean, look at this fabric. Is that not gorgeous? This is my favorite piece of fabric I think I've ever bought. I love it so much. So much. I wish I remembered what it's called. <laughs> I'm afraid to order more. Okay, here's the thing. The only people I have ever seen selling Wexford linen in the United States is Silk Weaver. And we all know how awesome their reviews have been lately, right? So, I don't know. I had ordered um, a year ago, maybe, when I started hearing people complain. I got on their Facebook page because they sell fabric on there. I am not encouraging anyone to order from them. So if you order from them and something goes wrong with your order, it's not my fault. I didn't do it. I luckily have never had an issue with them. Luckily. I mean, that's my main worth. But I have always bought off their Facebook flash sales. So it's already done up. It's ready to go. But I know I've seen on their Facebook page recently people complaining that even doing that, they've had issues getting their fabric. So putting that out there. Um... But about a year ago, I went on and bought, through their Facebook flash sales, um, several pieces of Wexford linen they had. Um, the problem is, the pictures on there are not very true to life at all. Because here's the thing. I don't think they're showing you a picture of that exact linen they're selling, or fabric. I think they're showing you their stock photo of, I don't know. Say it's a blue. It's called sky blue. I don't know. Coming up with a name. Okay. I have a feeling they are not showing you. This is a picture I just took of this fabric. I can tell you. Here's my stock photo from my computer. Because the pieces have come and they've been so off of the color. Like I expect a lime green and I'm getting dark green. I mean, it's just been very. So anyway, I've sold them all through. Um. Uh, stash unload because they just haven't been colors that I could see myself ever using they just weren't right for me now obviously other people liked them they bought them but 
I think I may have one or two left. Um, and I hate that because they've shown more on their flash sales I've liked recently. And I'm like, ugh. Oh. But I'm afraid to order it. And I don't know, maybe the, whoever's taking the pictures just sucks at taking pictures. And they're in bad lighting, putting the flash on. You know, just like when I hold up the fabric in here. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. Anyway. Okay, so let me show. Okay, so for the March history, uh, stitch along, I am going to plan on continuing working on Henry VIII. Henry! Look, look! He has half a beard! He's got this. Huh? Right now he has my husband's beard. <laughs> so, um, Sunday, I did all the dark brown. Well, the two browns. Here, up on over his fur, and then up to his face. Um, I'll watch him Road to Perdition. Strange movie. Okay, I watched first third. And then I got on IMDb and found out what the rest was about and said, Meh. The first part I saw was interesting. And that was enough. Um, I do want to order the Clouds Factory Henry VIII and also the Belle Epoque. They're adorable. I love them. But I'm afraid if I get that Henry VIII and stitch it, I won't ever come back to this one. And I really want to finish this one. He's huge. Love him. I've been watching um, watching the Tudors also while I've been working on him a little bit and re-watching the Tudors because it's amazing. The, the HBO one. Um, there was an old BBC show. BBC slash PBS. But it was BBC. Um, made in the early 90s maybe. The Wives of Henry VIII. Something along those lines. But it was a, there was an episode for every wife. And we watched that in um, one of my history classes in college. I really, but those were really good, too. They are very informative. And, you know, this professor knew his English history. He really knew his stuff. So if he liked it enough to show it to us, and then he made us write papers on him. Oh, every week we'd write another paper. But he didn't make us do tests. <laughs> I liked him. Um, okay, anyway, so that's that, that Henry VIII. I would like to do that small one also. What I'd like to do is do the big one and put it up upstairs, and then uh, maybe do the smaller one, because I know it's like this big when it's stitched, and maybe do that, because I'm trying to put fun stitching like that, like Cloud's Factory and stuff down here, not so much in the living room, so... Space is precious when you have little kids and you got to put their pictures up because they're so stinking cute. If you're my Facebook friend, did you see Abby's school picture yesterday? I have it right here. They do pictures twice a year. Um, which I kind of get and then I don't get. Like, you really want me to pay $45 twice a year for pictures that the only difference is her outfit? Oh, God, isn't she adorable? Look at that. See, now I get a glare. Okay, my only issue with the picture, her hair looks brown, and she has strawberry blonde hair. So I was able to alter it a little bit with the lighting to get it more red on one, but now, but now she's looks purple. But her shirt changed. But anyway, it's cute. And she said she likes it more than the picture she took in the fall, but... I don't know. Even just for one sheet, one like the eight by ten, it's twelve bucks. I'm trying to not spend money. I'm trying to pay crap off. Okay, so I also started, um, or did start. I belong to the Cross Stitch Nation. Cross Stitch Nation by Heartstring Samplery came out last. Did it come out last March? The Nashville thing. I know I've had it since it came out last year. Um, I'm stitching it on Picture This Plus. Heritage, right? Right? This is heritage. It's kind of parchmenty color and then whoosh, out of frame. Uh, this part is like a bluish gray little bit bits. I'm not doing the called for threads. I went through my stash and because I had so many and was able to pull like look, 
Oh, man. This reverse mirror thing drives me. Okay. There. It's the center woman with the big wide dress. She has kind of a grayish hair, light blue. So I'm matching them up pretty well, despite from going through my stash of what I have on hand. Saving the money, right? Right, right? That's what it's about. Plus, I use the threads. If I don't use the threads, why do I have the threads? Have you guys seen some of the new stuff for the Nashville market? Some of, some of it is. Some of it I don't care for. But last year I ordered a lot of stuff and I barely stitched any of it. And this year I only want a couple things. I do want, um, well, from Heartstring Samplery, the Coffee Quaker. First I drink the coffee and then I do the thing. Try to get that glare off. Dun, dun, dun. There you go. You can kind of see it. I really like that. But it doesn't go with my kitchen. So I don't know if I'll do that. And then this one I like. Um, by the Bay Needle Arts, I am a needlesmith. I really like that one too. It's really pretty. Go away, glare. There you go. But again, just because I like it doesn't mean I'd ever actually stitch it. And then the hands on design um, cool bean series, which is a series of nine coffee themed smaller charts. And then you can get it on there's the other one and then the border for doing them all together. Um, I like this one a lot and that would go well in my kitchen. That's something I would do. But I already have a couple of larger things I'm working on, you know, series wise like that. So I don't know if I really want to do another. Um, one of them is the Snow Place Like Home. Let's check it out. I have finished the second square. Okay, no, I didn't finish. I'm almost done with the second square. That's all I have left. Um, I just received the fifth one yesterday. I have the fourth in here. First. The third one is upstairs in my bedroom. But here's the fourth one. Okay, thanks. I like the colors a lot. They're really fun. And this is just the recommended fabric. Um, it's nothing exciting. Lamb's wool linen. So, it's very, you know, it's very basic fabric. <gasps> basic. But I do like that. Okay, I also started Kaleidoscope, finally. Um, I ordered the chart at the end of, this, of the year. This was my one purchase before the end of the year, so I could start Stitch from Stash. You know, what was this, $13 maybe? Um, and I was having a conundrum as to what fabric to stitch it on. I had pulled out, I don't remember the names. I know that orange sickle or cream sickle, dream sickle, kind of an orangey white. I had a uh, purpley pink, and then I had hocus pocus, which is a purple. Um, and I had a few people say, to stitch it on white. But I didn't have white. That's why I was <laughs> saying, what should I stitch it on? Because I don't have any white fabric. I don't. That's why I ordered some last month. Um, but I just couldn't get on board with any of the three that I had there as an option. So I ordered white. I stitched the middle center. That's all I did the other day. Because I really wanted to stitch on Henry. So now I feel like stitching this. I should get this done. Go upstairs and stitch. Because it's already cheese. It's already 320. Abby will be home in 40 minutes. Wednesdays are fast. Elizabeth has pre-K and then she has gymnastics. I feed her lunch at school. Well, her school is at gymnastics, which is amazing. Um, so right after school ends, I bring her a sack lunch. She eats and then comes home and she's always hungry again. Wants more food. Need more food. Gymnastics wears it out of her. They run laps. She doesn't. She runs half a lap. And then she's like, no. Okay, so uh, the Clouds Factory Fabulous Woman in History. 
the next two women have come out. We have Cleopatra and Joan of Arc. My question is, who is the little figure next to Cleopatra? I know there's an ask. Is that a Roman soldier, like a Roman guard, or is it a little child? But she had three kids with Mark Antony, so I don't understand. I don't think it's a kid. I think it looks like a guard. Like, doesn't it look like they have a, like a staff in their hand and then Roman um, armor? I don't know. I'm going to ask it on the Clouds Factory group. Maybe Amber can answer that. But I'm just like, who's the little person? I'm pretty sure it's a Roman guard. Or maybe it's supposed to be Mark Antony, but why is he a third of her size? <laughs> I don't recall history saying he was a little person. I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be step back. Okay, so I'm stitching this on um, Twixt and Tween by that fabric dyer that shall not be named. Again, this was purchased on their fabric sale site a while back. Hmm. So as of yesterday, I was caught up. Now I'm not. But I'm not going to do it today because I just finished uh, Marie Curie over the weekend. And I'm just kind of meant on it right now. So Because I didn't have... Okay. It called for the sand under the lighthouse. It's $38.55. That is also supposed to be Eleanor Roosevelt's hair. I did not have that. So I switched her hair to 676. Okay. Which is like a gold fine but I didn't like it on this for some reason because I'm strange so I have I had or that was part of what I ordered from one two three stitch was three eight five five um and then the banner for Virginia wool the that color I can't remember what it's called I did not have it so I went through my stash and picked a kind of similar ish although apparently the one they chose I have it in here Okay, so this is what, where's that white paper at? This is what they have, okay? It's like a seafoam purpley beachcomber, okay? This is what I came up with. Uh, Tropical Ocean by Gentle Arts. It's got the blues, the bluey greenies. It does not have the purple, but it's working. So anyway, I have that. <clears throat> So I've swapped out a couple things. Um, one thing I am realizing this month, because I've been stitching on so many different, or two months, different projects. Usually I just have like two or three maybe um, near my chair. Because I've got a like a end table. And underneath it I have a big um, bag that I put my individual projects into. Usually there's three, maybe four. Well, I've had like up to six or more lately. I realized these project bags that I have bought off the different people over the last couple years have been making them. Um, although I like them and they're beautiful, I really prefer clear bags. I like being able to see my project. I don't like constantly opening them up. What's in here? What's in there? What's in that? And then I have several kitted up projects and I keep those in the bedroom on a bookcase and I have to go through them all the time. I can't remember what's in what. So I think I'm going to put mine up for sale, a few of them anyway, on um, Dash Unload. But clearly for less than what I paid. But I just, I just I'm not getting use out of them like I want to. So, you know, you live and learn, right? But I've got a bunch of so much to love bags. I have a couple from Dina. I have a couple from Shirley from Stash Unload with the wide bottoms. So um, I have a few from Little, from Nell. What are those? Um, is it Little Yellow House? Little, 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 little yellow house something. You know, you know Nell. So anyway, that's that okay I have one more I think this is it um I will try and do a video again <laughs> sooner than two months because this gets confusing okay the last thing I've started uh was Ships Manor's um Mystery Town sampler 
I like it a lot. And I was stitching it. I'm trying to find the chart. Well, not the chart. I'm trying to show you the picture. <laughs> to show you what I've been stitching. <laughs> okay. So, um, building one came out a couple weeks ago. You had your choice between the blue church or whatever color you want to stitch it or the barn. Okay. I thought the barn was the schoolhouse at first, honestly. And I'm almost calling it a schoolhouse. So I did the barn because I'm not a religious person and I grew up on a farm. I'd rather have a farm than a church. And then these are they're little beehives, aren't they? So cute. So cute. So I'm using his linen. He died. I'm using his threads. He created plus a lot of DMC in small amounts. But this one's fun. There's, what is it? Six buildings, maybe? I don't know. But this one's been fun. But I'm stitching this while watching this. Works. So... Now, whenever I look at this, I'm thinking, but I don't have a This Is Us to watch right now. I can't stitch on this. So, I think that's it. I think I finished. Jeez. Um, 40 minutes. That's all? Really? I'm an underachiever, ladies and gentlemen. Um, yeah. Okay. I think that's it. Um, if I come up with something else, I may create another small little video. But tonight I'm going to work on Henry. Because Stargazer's skirt grew so much since the last time I looked at it that I'm scared. You know what I wish? I really wish Mirabilia charts did not come as one huge ass chart. I wish they came as like you know like the Hades do. Six pages or something. I think them being so big and they're double sided. Maybe if they weren't double sided it wouldn't be so rough. But you don't really want to color on it because you know oh I got some of those highlighter pencils like Danielle had. They're awesome. I got them from Amazon. I don't it I don't know if it's the same company she got. Um, it was just under $20 for six, and it came with a sharpener. And they are fat. They are fatter than a normal pencil. And I really like them. Um, I've been using those lately, and I like them. That's about all I would say on that. So, yeah, I haven't ordered any. I don't have much of anything. Just. We've got spring break in two weeks. I feel like I just had that with both of them being sick. Elizabeth was home for over a week from school. And then, oh, get this, how this started. All the girls in her class, there's like seven of them, were doing a big group hug on a Wednesday after class. Huge group hug. It was so cute. Moms were standing there taking pictures. The kids are so cute. Oh, I love them so much. Friday, five of them are out puking. That's when Elizabeth started. And then she had the fevers and whatnot. But she did not go back until the following Friday. So she missed three days. Um, so it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And she hadn't had a fever since Wednesday morning. I thought she'd be perfectly fine. I go to pick her up, and she's 103. And she's tired. I've fallen asleep in the car, dead tired. And the teacher said, I think she just wore herself out. I think she just wasn't ready for the all the motion and because they run around in the gym and stuff for a while um and she slept so and then it still took her you know it was president's day so they were off anyway but um that's how all the other kids were too when we went back that following wednesday they're like yeah cause three of the girls all went back that friday together and all of them like slept that afternoon away and were just it's like they receded you know they got worse but, you know anyway so then Abby was off the whole next week, so you just it's back to school. So this week's been nice. Everybody's at school. Okay, I'm gonna get off here and upload it and I'll talk to y'all soon. Bye.